Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make a, a really easy reversible apron. So let's go over to the workshop and we'll get started. We're going to be working with some of Kay Facet's prints today. I love his designs and I have a lot of the different fabrics. They're nice and bright and cheerful and they will make a really, really fun apron. So I've picked out three more that I'm going to use here. So I'm going to use this for one side of the apron, this for the other side of the apron, and then the waistband shows from both sides. So this will look good against both these prints. Here are the sizes we need for our apron. I'm going to cut the front and the lining 24 inches square. So you're going to need about three quarters of a yard if you're buying yardage. Now for the waistband, I'm going to cut three at five inches, and those are going to be the whole width of the fabric. The only other item we need is some lightweight interfacing. So you want to do it really lightweight, and it should be fusible. It's a lot easier to work with. So I'm using this Pellon product here, and this is an iron-on, fusible, lightweight interfacing, and that's going to go in the waistband. You can skip using that, but the waistband really will hold up better, and the ties will look much, much better if you use the interfacing. I'm going to go ahead and steam press my fabric. You can spray it off and then steam press it. You can wash it first if you like. I find that a good steam pressing will usually shrink it up a little bit and make it really easy to cut. I have the front and the lining, both sides of the apron, stacked up here, and I'm going to cut them at the same time. So this is a 24 by 24 inch square that I'm going to cut. I just have it folded right here. This is the waistband and ties. And I'm going to cut three strips that are five inches wide. And then I am going to cut them to 40 inches long. The last thing we need is the interfacing. So this comes about 20 inches wide. You just need to cut some two inch strips and we can just cut a whole bunch of them. We're going to put this on the waistband and you can just put them one right next to another. They don't have to be seamed or anything, so it can be in a lot of little pieces. That'll work fine. Now we're going to stitch this into one really long strip. I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance for the whole apron. That's a lot bigger than we're used to doing when we're making quilting patchwork but it's similar to what we would normally do in clothing construction. A lot of clothing construction, when I learned to sew, we always used a 5 8 inch seam allowance. But I'm gonna use a half inch here because it's a little bit easier to see on the machine and that'll give me the size waistband I want. I'm going to iron my seam allowances open here. And then I am going to fold this whole thing right sides together and I am going to press it. I'm going to press it like this the whole way. Now we need to make the ends of the ties here pointed. I don't want them straight so I want to cut these off at a 45 degree angle, both of these. So we've got a couple ways we can do this. You can line it up on your board you can get your cutting ruler here, find the 45 degree angle, which is here. So you can line it up on one of your cutting board lines. We've got the line lined up there. And then we can just make a cut right here. And then we know we've got a nice angle on the end of the tie. Now I'm going to want to put the fusible interfacing on here, but I also want the end of it cut at an angle. So I'm just going to use this as a 
template and I'm going to just take my scissors and cut this here. Now every fusible interfacing comes with instructions so you're going to want to follow the instructions but we're going to put this the cut edge right along the fold and it's about a half inch from here because I cut this two inches and this was cut five inches and folded in half and I'm going to just slide it down so I've got a nice half inch there also. So follow the instructions that come with the fusible. Basically you can tack it with your iron a little bit and then usually you want to cover it with a press cloth and then steam press it. My iron works so well that I can usually fuse it right here with this. But follow the instructions that come with your interfacing because they do vary a little. Keep adding these pieces of the interfacing. It doesn't matter that it's in two pieces there, they're just going to go right up next to each other until you've got the whole tie waistband covered with the interfacing. Now when you get down to this end, we want to trim this off a half inch short. So you can just make a little crease there, cut it with your scissors, and then complete your steaming. Now we need to mark the middle of the waistband. So I'm going to put the two ends together, fold it in half, so we know right where the center is here. And I'm going to measure over 13 inches. So I will have a 26 inch opening. And I'm gonna put a little pencil mark right there and a little pencil mark right there. Now we're gonna take it back to the ironing board. Here's my two marks here. So this part is going to be left open when we make the waistband so that we can tuck the skirt up into it. So I am going to iron this part of the seam allowance up right now because it'll be much easier to do that now. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to iron this part back so that it is exactly meeting the other side. And I'm just going to use the iron to keep that in place there. Now we have this right sides together. It's going to get flipped to right side out. And if we keep it ironed like, like this, it's gonna be difficult to get it turned and laying flat because it's gonna have that crease in it and it's gonna to wanna to be a little wonky. So I'm just going to open it up now and iron right down the middle with this flat. And I'm gonna be careful when I come to this part with the these pieces pre-ironed that I leave those there. I just wanna iron right in the middle there so that we can flip it easily later on. I know it seems like a lot of extra ironing, but it really does make a difference and makes the waistband lay really flat. So it's gonna be a little bit tricky to get in here, but we can re-iron this part. We just wanna get that flat there. Now I'm going to refold it like this and we are going to sew right along the edge of the interfacing and we're going to sew all the way down to where we started that ironing. We're going to sew down to this line, back tack, and we're going to leave this part open. Then we're going to start sewing again at the other mark all the way off the end. So this is about a half inch seam allowance, that's what I was heading for. And I'm just sewing right to the outside of the interfacing. Here's our little pencil mark, so I'm going to sew right to there and then just back tack a little. So we want to leave this part open because it's going to fit right over the skirt once we get it flipped. So now we're going to come down here to our other mark and we'll start sewing again right there. I'm going to trim off 
most of this extra bulk from the corner there and a little bit off of that corner so that when we flip this right side out, we don't have a lot of extra fabric there. There's lots of ways to turn this right side out. I have found that if you get some sort of a long stick, this is a curtain rod that's pretty smooth, or if you have a small skinny yardstick, my yardsticks are all too wide, you can poke this in a little bit and then you can just feed this down the rod and when we get to the opening, this part will come out. And we will have the corner right here. And then we can just feed this down like this. Keep pulling as you go so you don't get the stick left in there. So there's one half already flipped and we'll just poke that out and pull it with a little pin to get this nice and flat. Then we'll do the other side and the waistband ties will be almost done. So poke in just a little bit, put something that's smooth right in there and you can just feed this right down it. So I like to pull this out with a pin. You can just Put it in and you can kind of push from the back side so you want to grab enough fabric with your pin so you don't pull any loose threads out but you can keep maneuvering it till you get a nice point on there now we want to get this nice and flat so we want this seam opened up so i'm going to push it like this and just draw my fingernail across the back of it and then flatten it out and that seam is going to go right in the middle and this is going to lay nice and flat and then we can iron it. Here's where the opening starts. So we're just going to keep ironing. We're just going to get this all in place. Edges lined up very nicely and just keep ironing this really, really flat. The whole waistband tie piece here is all completely done and unless you look or open it up here you can't even tell where that opening is going to be and that's what you want. You want these ironed exactly right on top of themselves very neatly because we are going to slide the skirt part of the apron right in here and we're going to top stitch it down. We want it to look good from both sides so that's why it's really important to get this nice and straight right now. To make our apron skirt look nice we're going to put a couple of pleats in it right at the waist here on both sides of the waist. So turn your piece over and we are going to make a couple little pencil marks eight inches apart. So this is 24 total so I'm going to put a mark at eight inches here and at 16 inches. So they're eight inches apart centered and I'm going to I'm going to make this into a pleat so it's going to be a three inch pleat. So I'm just going to do a little line and put a little cap on it there. Now we're going to fold along these lines. We're just going to make this right in the middle. And I am going to stitch down three quarters of an inch from the edge. I'm just going to stitch down there and stop when I get to that parallel to that little pencil line. If you want to draw a little more, then you can draw like this, and this is what you can sew on. So you can put this at three inches and at three quarters, and you can draw all the way around it if you like. So we are going to stitch down here and stitch over there. So I'm going to start here actually, come over, pivot, and then go up. Then we'll do the same thing for the second pleat here. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side of the apron. Iron the pleats for one half to the outside and for the other half to the inside. That way they will lay flat when we put the front and the lining together. 
So we are now going to put these together. This is the top here, right sides together. And we are going to use a half inch seam and we're going to stitch all the way around these three sides and then turn it right side out. Trim off these corners, the extra bulk in the corner there. Then turn this right side out. And then we're going to iron it nice and flat. And then we'll take it back over to the machine and we will just stay stitch this edge here with the pleats facing in opposite directions. So we've got these two going in and these two going out. So I'm just gonna flatten everything out and sew about a quarter inch from the edge here so that everything stays in place. So I'm gonna stay stitch a quarter inch from the edge here. This is just so that everything will stay in place when I put the waistband on. Now I'm going to edge stitch around the sides and the bottom of the skirt. And this keeps it nice and flat, especially after you wash it, which we're going to be doing with an apron. So I'm just about an eighth of an inch from the edge, sewing right along the seam. Now we just have to put the waistband onto the skirt and the apron will be ready to wear. So let's find the center of this. And we've got this opening here, so we're going to take the center here, center it up with the middle of the apron here, and then we're just going to open this up, and we're going to put the apron right there. So we've got about a half inch of the skirt inside here, and I'm going to put a lot of pins in. I'm going to pin through all the layers, and make this nice and flat. And since we ironed the waistband so nicely, these edges are meeting up. So when we stitch it on, we're gonna catch everything all in one stitching. So just pin it all the way down here, then we'll take it over to the machine and we'll stitch it on securely. Now I'm just going to edge stitch right along here and when I come to here, it'll be going through all the layers. And I'm going to keep stitching all the way to the end of the tie. I'm going to go to the very end of it. And then I'm going to come back around this side and edge stitch along here. And we will be all done. So I find it easier to stitch like this. You may want to turn the whole apron around and stitch from the other edge. It doesn't matter. But we are about an eighth of an inch from the end here. Take your pins out as you go. And don't sew too close to this fold. You want to keep a good seam allowance on there so that you make sure you catch the back. So my opening is all closed, but I still think this looks a lot better with the top stitching all the way around. Here's the reversible apron, both sides. So you have choices here. You can keep these really long ties. You can tie it in the front with a big bow. If you are only gonna tie it in the back, you can make your ties a lot shorter. So it's almost like a skirt apron. It looks like a present. It's really a lot of fun to make. Now I made another one the other day because I just love these Kate Facet fabrics. So we've got purple combined with the red really cheerful and then with the scrap i had i had enough left to make just a little mini apron now it's not lined but if you have a granddaughter or a little girl you know they would probably love to have this cute little apron hi everyone since we're doing the cafe apron video this time we thought we'd give away a cafe facet quilt that we made this is a pattern that donna designed a floating point star it has the cafe prints it has motor grunge in it also Get over here so you can get a better look at it. It's really a beauty. It's a throw size, and it's got the very nice kite tail border. This is the second one we did of these. 
Our original is here, which is also Cape Facet, Grunge, and the Kite Tail Border. Just different color combinations. This is a beautiful combination here. And if you enter, I hope you win it. Good luck. It's very easy to enter the giveaway. Just click the link below and that will take you to our website. You just put in your email address and your name and this contest is open to everyone worldwide. We ship all over the world. Now, even if you've entered our prior giveaways, they're all separate. This is a new one, so you have a new chance to win. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make a reversible apron. Happy sewing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>